Welcome back everyone, this is Victor Campos and we're continuing our Android app development. In our last class, uh, I talked about setting up your Android virtual device. <clears throat> so if you don't have a real device, you can run one on your computer. I've got mine running. I feel that it is pretty responsive. I can go from screen to screen. I'm happy with it. Hopefully yours is good as well. The next step is, well, now we need to use the software where we're going to write our actual application. So that's going to be in the same folder where you have set, where you have uninstalled, or where you have unzipped your ADT bundle that you got from a previous video. That's the same folder where we're looking at the SDK manager. So I'm going to leave my virtual device running, and I recommend you do as well. Don't close your virtual device, because you'll have to wait every time for it to start up. Leave it running, and then go back to this folder, this ADT bundle folder, and open the Eclipse folder. Inside of Eclipse folder, you're going to see a file called eclipse.exe. That's your actual Eclipse application. Now, it does not install itself automatically to the Start menu. Uh, maybe on the next version, it will. What you can do, however, is right-click, and if you're using Windows uh, 7 or Windows 8, you might have Pin to, pin to Taskbar or Pin to Start menu. If I select Pin to Taskbar, now my taskbar down here will have the handy uh, launching icon for Eclipse. Well, what is Eclipse? It's an integrated development environment, an IDE. Basically, this is the program where we're going to be writing our code for our Android app. It's also going to be the program that we use to install the, the, the app that we're creating onto a virtual device or a real device. We're compiling it there. And then in the end, when we're finished with our project, this will also be used to create our final uh, file that we will eventually upload to Google Play. So for the moment, go ahead and double click it, let it launch, and you might, you will definitely see a few things different from my video here. I use these Android development tools. I use Eclipse before it's already set up. For yourself, you're going to see a few things. Number one, you might see a pop-up that says, where would you like to set your workspace? Your workspace is the folder that you choose where all of your applications get, get saved all of your Android projects. So for this class, choose whichever you'd like. The default is going to be in your user folder. That'll be fine. Or you can choose a separate drive, like a flash drive or something else, but choose your, choose your workspace. You can always change it later. The next thing that will probably show up is uh, a question about, would you like to send statistics to Google? You can say yes or no, doesn't matter, I've selected no. Then when I get the, the next window, it, this is finally Eclipse, actually. Uh, at the top, don't be confused for a couple of things. The icon that I clicked in my folder had this little purple globe with stripes, and now that I'm that my program has launched, it's this green globe with angle brackets or uh, curly brackets. And then also at the top, the app says Java ADT. So you're running the correct thing. You are running Eclipse. But since Eclipse can accomplish a lot, this has been branded uh, for Android development. You might have used Eclipse before in another class. You can continue to use your Eclipse, but I recommend using the one that comes with our bundle here. What also loads up here is this tab, Welcome tab, and it talks uh, about itself. The Android development tools provide a first-class development environment for building Android apps. This integrated development environment, IDE, is set up with the latest version of the Android platform and system image, so you can immediately begin building apps and running them on the Android emulator. So you can uh, do you can click on new Android app if you'd like that button there, or read these tutorials if you'd like, and I recommend you do. For us, let's just get around it, uh, Eclipse a bit more. I'm gonna maximize my window, and this welcome, this welcome uh, tab. I'm gonna minimize it. Notice at the top right we have minimize and restore for the tab, the welcome the the welcome tab, not for the app for for Eclipse. 
be careful because Eclipse can be very cluttered, actually. Lots of tabs, lots of panels, lots of sub-tabs, and drop-down menus, etc. So minimize the welcome screen, and it goes off to the side here. Uh, you should also see then at the very top now a row of icons. If you do not see your row of icons at the top, you can go to Window, Show Toolbar. Mine is already visible, so I'm fine. The reason I say this is because you've got your most commonly used icons here, like Save, of course, or New. But what you've also got are two quick ways to get to the Android SDK Manager and the Android Virtual Device Manager, the AVD. On a previous video I mentioned, if you're not able to get to your SDK Manager by double-clicking it in the folder, here is another way to get to it. Just click the icon there. It's a little Android guy in a box, I guess. Or you can go to Window, Android SDK Manager. On the left side, you'll see the Package Explorer. I have three apps so far here because I've been using Android before. And I've got my projects here. Yours will be empty. In the center, you'll have your environment or your, uh, your panel where you're going to write your code. I don't have any file open, so it's empty. On the right side, you probably have something that looks like this, Outline. Uh, this is going to show you details of your selected projects. Uh, I usually close mine, or I had mine closed. Notice I can easily close a panel, bring it back. At the very bottom, you've got another panel. Mine is set to console. Yours might be on other spots, like maybe problems or someplace else. Uh, we'll keep an eye on this as we use Eclipse. It'll, it'll uh, make us aware of problems and status updates and such. Again, you can close every panel. If you close any panel, for example, if you wanted to minimize this, but instead you closed it with the X, it's no longer on the side here, you can always bring back any panel by going back to Window, Show View, and then choose the panel you hid. For example, in my case, the outline comes back. If your interface still doesn't quite look like mine, at the very top right you're going to see the, the different uh, perspectives that you can load. Because you can do so much with Eclipse under open um, perspectives, you might have, well, how do we want to set up our editing environment? Do we want to set it up for C++, for debugging, um, team synchronization, etc.? We want to set ours up to Java, if it's not already set. So you can select Java default and then OK. And we've got the Java interface. So what else do we have on Eclipse? The usual file menu, edit menu, and a bunch of others that are brand new to Eclipse. So this is going to be our editing environment. It's If you've had any experience with uh, Dreamweaver, for example, I liken Eclipse to it because it can uh, it's the tool that you use to manage your projects, to edit files, and then to deploy files. If you view something else like Visual Studio or any other uh, editing environment, this is, this is just about the same thing, although with its own nuances. So come back on the next video and we'll talk about actually using Eclipse, creating a project, and deploying to a virtual device.